Okay, a bit of a, a, a quick tour around how to take the shock absorbers out and change the springs on a Nissan Note 2006. Um, okay, top of the shock absorbers, you've got two visible bolts there. They're 13 mil and one invisible one. Now allegedly you can get to it down this hole here in the trim, which involves not getting away with not taking this out. However, you see where that is? That's where you need to get to. And I decided it was easier to take the whole trim panel off. Now, to take the trim panel off, put it back in to begin with. First thing is you've got to take the wipers off. To get the wipers off you undo the bolt quite a few turns but just have enough bolt to uh, held on the thread and hold the wiper blades as far out as you can and just tap the end of the nut and the wiper blade should come off. Now what you've also got to undo is have some trim clips which are there and there and th there and there. Now if these have never been taken out on your car before they're going to be as brittle as hell but if you want a top tip on how to get them out because they are engaged with a couple of pins that you might be able to see down there I've used a tie wrap cable tie to push in top and bottom to push the pins out of the way to then extract the trim clip what you've also got is one, two trim panels, retainers. I'm going to replace those with self, self -tap, big self-tapping screws and a bit of a, uh, a washer. And you've also got a rubber seal on the windscreen here, which sits in there and fastens on here with of trim clips that just let go okay so assuming that you're taking this wonderful panel off do those three bolts if you undo them all the way the shock absorber will drop if the suspension is not supported underneath so we'll go around here now What's retaining the shock absorber at this end are a couple of bolts. Now you won't have these same bolts, you will have some rusted nightmare pair of bolts. Okay, now I gave up and uh, went to uh, get the angle grinder out and basically took the ground the ends of the studs out at both those sides and then punched them out. So once they're ground flat, avoid damaging this flat surface here you can punch them out and get them out then you have to be sure that you don't damage the ABS sensor here which is clipped in one and two and those just pull out and also the brake line here brake hose is retained in here with a clip which I've retained on the end here and what you actually do is put this in that space and then put the clip in on top but that does it up anyway okay so assuming you ground these two flat then punch the ends out and either the shock absorber will drop with the hub or the shock absorber will stay where it is um, because you've just retained a little bit of thread at the top for the three bolts i showed you before okay now um all you have to do to change the springs is get the top of the shock absorber off now Assuming you've got the shock absorber in the workshop, you'll use a coil compressor. Just squish the coils flat and then you have fun, great fun, with this. And notice that there's a hex key hole in there. And that's an 18mm nut. Buy yourself an 18mm open-ended angled spanner like this. That is going to be 
really, really, really useful, okay? And that fits on there. And you have a hex socket in there on a nice meaty T-bar or something like that. And then you basically pull on this to try and unscrew it. Now, um, if you're sensible, what you've done the night before is you've filled this recess with plus gas or whatever it is to release in corrosion removing um, fluid just to try and do your best to undo this because it's going to be a right pain in the backside but once you've got it undone it's going to be absolutely fine and that's pretty much it so just remember cable ties for getting those clips out and watch out if you're going to be grinding back here you don't clip the ABS hose or the brake hose just be very very careful okay and don't forget to undo the suspension link here it's undone as you see that fits in there to get it to reconnect afterwards you'll just have to jack the uh, jack the hub up to uh, get the two in alignment and then lock it off okay so that's how I do it you check in the manual if that's how you should do it but I'm using aftermarket high tension bolts here not ordinary bolts high tension bolts okay considerably cheaper than the genuine article from Mazda sorry from uh, Nissan at five quid a shot but I believe that's going to be just as just as good okay catch you later